Hey everyone, welcome to Starmorph where we talk about artificial intelligence and web development. Today we are going to go into a coding tutorial, getting started in LangChain JavaScript. So I'm going to start out the video by showing you some awesome stuff that you can build with LangChain and talking about what it is as a framework. Then we'll go into the documentation and see why you want to use LangChain because of all the amazing tools that are available in the library. And then we'll get started on running and building a script that uses LangChain to interact with the OpenAI API and generate some code for us. And I'm gonna show how that script creates the output first, and then I'm gonna provide you with a GitHub template that has the script ready to go. You just have to start it up and it will run the LangChain script. And then we'll go into how to actually build that script from um, that template from scratch in case you don't want to use the template, but instead want to integrate LangChain into your own uh, Node.js application. So let's get started. All right, so I've been playing with LangChain a lot, and one of the awesome things it can do is you can create a GPT-4 bot that is given documents, and you can create an embedding from the documents and have it uh, get more specific knowledge and be able to reference um, specific you know areas that you want it to be an expert in so here's four examples of bots that i've been building this one here is a code assistant uh like a senior developer and i've actually been talking to this bot a lot i probably talked to it for like two or three hours yesterday because i've been giving it documentation and information about how i build websites and what tools i use and how to use those tools and now it's able to give me really helpful advice on how to help code and I've been learning. It's been like my pair programmer where I write some code and there's a bug and I'll say, hey, why is this not working um, in my next JS app? Or, you know, how do I how do I do a lang chain vector storage in Pinecone or in Chroma? And you know, it's a really good learning tool. And it's amazing what you can teach these bots to do um, through these embeddings and in, in loading the documents in. And so that's one example of what you can do. Um, you're welcome to use this bot if you want to talk to it about LangChain stuff. And another great resource is there's a Discord bot in the LangChain Discord. Um, and that Discord bot can also it reference like LangChain documents and it gives really helpful responses for debugging as well. So that's another option. So let's go over to the LangChain docs and take a look at what's available in this framework. And I believe they just made a huge update to these docs today. And I think I see like a lot of new stuff in here. So I have to dive in and I'm excited to see how this framework is building because it's been updating like really quickly on Twitter. I see them constantly coming out with new releases. I feel like this ecosystem is blowing up right now and for good reason because working with large language models um, in, into web applications is just such a cool crossover and it's giving us all of these new abilities. And so LangChain is a toolkit to, to do that. And so let's go into some of the examples of things we can do here. So one important thing is there's the concept of a document and that's how we're gonna load in a, part of how we're gonna load in, you know, the company specific documents. So in the case of CodeChat, that might be documentation or instructions on how to write code. Um, this one, I'm trying to learn more about software law so i gave it some like research papers and philosophies over software law and so i can say hey cato tell me about different licensing agreements for software i actually gave it githubs like github has an official site for software licensing agreements and i gave it that website um so it has information on the different the pros and cons of each or the like affordances of each software licensing. So I, I want to I need to format this a little bit better, but you can see here that it's starting to give out some licensing examples and talking in detail more about them. So point being that you can give it information and then have it learn more about that information by loading in the documents. Okay. So in order to do this, um, in order to load in the documents, you want to create an embedding. And this is a wrapper around the OpenAI API that creates an embedding. Um, we also have some tools to work with different large language models. 
on OpenAI, on Hugging Face, on Cohere. So people ask like, why would you use LangChain? Can't you just use the OpenAI API? And it's like, yeah, you can, but LangChain also has a lot of other tools to work with large language models. Um, and it's great to have those tools and the flexibility to really you know, have a whole ecosystem of, of different tools. Um, so that's some of the LLMs. Then we have a concept of a prompt template, which is really cool. I'm really optimistic on the field of prompts becoming more developed and more toolkits coming out for prompting. And I actually have an idea for a library um, that I want to build that maybe I'll like open source and let people use as like an NPM package or something to kind of work with prompts. Um, but prompt templates allow you to like set almost like a const where if you want to use the same format of a prompt in multiple places, you know, you're doing multiple calls and you always want the um, prompt to be similar, then you can use a prompt template and then load that into the chat. Vector storage is another toolkit that is needed for creating the embeddings and then storing um, the documents. So that's another toolkit we have available here. Langchain also has some um, abilities for memory that can give the bots a better experience because they can reference past messages and start to learn um, you know, how to interact with the current user better based on their past messages. And then there's also a concept of change chains, which is like a sequence of events um, that can use large language models. And then there's a concept of agents. And agents, I'm still wrapping my head around a, a little bit, but basically I think I believe they perform like a specific task using large language models. And there's a lot of toolkits. Um, are we on a different docs now? Yeah. There's a lot of toolkits that and different tools that these agents can use. So for example, one of the tools we used in another video was an agent that interacts with the Zapier um, natural language API that just came out. And so these are getting updated really quickly. I mean, you can see here, there's the chat GPT plugins and that came out like a week ago. So there's already tools in LangChain to work with chat GPT plugins. So that's pretty awesome. Anyway, we could go through this for like an hour. So let me jump over to getting started on doing this script. All right. So we're going to go into this repo. Here we go. We're going to go into this quick start repo, LangChain.js quick start. And this is going to be available on GitHub. I'm going to put this in the description. And this is the quick start here. So just to show you the full process, you, we would go to this URL. And then I'm going to clone this repo down, go into the repo, we run npm run or npm install and npm run dev. Oh, I made a mistake. Okay. We do have to do something before that. We have to create our environment variable uh, file. So I'm going to go into one of my other projects and I am going to bring that environment file into our LangChain quick start. And the environment file, that's where you store your open AI keys so you don't have to publicly expose it in the app. All right, so now that we have that environment file in there, we can run these commands. Okay, now it's gonna run this LangChain script that we have. Okay, so we just ran that script and as you can see, it says file save successfully and we got this response, import react from React, so this right here is a basic React component that returns an H1 tag. As you can see, there's a lot of formatting in here that's not ideal because we're kind of closer to like the prompt uh, layer, I believe they call it, closer to the actual raw output from uh, GPT. So there's included in the script I'm about to show you, I wrote a little script that cleans this all up and then turns it into a regular React component. Okay, so that's what the script does. That's how you uh, would run it on your machine if you want to like start with this. Um, you go to that repo and then run that command we just did. Now let's go into like what's happening in the script and how to code it. And then we can set up the environment um, and do it all from scratch. So let's go in here. And I also followed a blog post to help me set up the environment. And I'm putting a link to that in the GitHub readme. Um, 
And I've just kind of consolidated some of the blog post commands here into a readme that has the steps. And these steps are only needed if you wanna like actually integrate this into your own project. This template already has completed these steps. So as we just did, all you need to do is this step here if you wanna just run this template. All right, so let's go into the main script here. This is the main script that we just ran that generated that code component. And the first thing we do is we import the dependencies we need. Then we import this dependency. Um, these, I believe, came from the LangChain documentation. They have examples. And I tried a few examples and I decided this one was a good basic template. And um, so they provide the imports that you'll need depending on what you want to do in LangChain. If you're trying to you know, create an agent. Let's see, they just updated this whole documentation, so I still have to learn it. But here's like an example. So they provide the imports and then they provide a lot of the functionality. You know, you need to do a lot of different things with LangChain. So going back to the code, we're gonna take we're gonna use OpenAI and we're gonna use a prompt template in this example. And then we're also gonna use a structured output parser, and that allows us to structure how the output is going to come back and I wanted to create a code snippet so I wanted it to be a specific format and the parsing helps with removing a lot of the stuff um, that you don't want in the response. Okay so we import our dependencies and then next we I imported my I chose to use this this is a library.env that um, allows you to load in your environment variables from another file so that's what I'm using to feed this my OpenAI key. Okay, and then this is kind of badly formatted. This should be, you know, up here, but um, chat open AI is another thing that we're bringing in from LangChain and also from the LangChain schema library, we're bringing in human chat message and not using system chat message. Okay, so now we have an async function and we have a prompt here, give me a Next.js component that renders an H1 tag with the text star morph. So that's what the output we got uh, was. Now here I made a script that takes the response from this OpenAI call and saves it to a file named response.txt. Okay, because I wanted to just save, you know. Okay, so this is a script here to remove some escape characters. I was playing around with like how to get a cleaner format back from um, removing, yeah, all the stuff we don't need in the response. And let's see, this function here. Okay, so this is actually after we save the file, this is another function that runs and it cleans up the file. So it calls this remove escape characters and that's what takes this kind of not ideal output format and, you know, with these characters and turns it into just the, the correct um, React component. So that's that. Then we call the process file. And then we just call this async function that goes to the OpenAI API. So as you can see, this is a really basic uh, call to the OpenAI API. We just kind of initiated a new chat. Um, you know, you could put more parameters in here. I believe like your model that you want to use and a token limit, uh, like a max token and you know, all the settings that are in the OpenAI API, or rather are in, yes, I believe this is the format of the OpenAI API, um, not the link chain. And so, yeah, it's a pretty basic call. We're just saying, you know, here's the prompt, um, please use GPT to do this, and then we'll save the file. And then I'll just show you that in the directory here, we have this output.txt file and response.txt file. So I believe it's the output.txt file that's the clean version. So there we go. We have a little React component here. And you can imagine you could make this um, prompt a lot more descriptive and generate some pretty cool code. And that's pretty awesome. So <laughs> that is why we're using LangChain. And I hope this was insightful as to like how to get started with a LangChain app. Um, I know a lot of people who are more on like the front end developer side might not be as comfortable setting up a node project um, rather than just running in the browser. And so that's why I'm providing this template to get started with the node. Um, 
But then this is also the, yes, exactly how this template was built. So if you wanted to, you know, learn a little more about building the node environment and practice doing that, then you could go um, on the template and follow these instructions. And this is how the template was created, setting up the node project with TypeScript. Yeah, I also, again, want to mention that I got this uh, node environment from set up from this blog post here. So thank you to whoever wrote this blog post because it's really helpful and they actually have, I think this is like a whole community, but there's definitely, I've seen a few other Langchain um, articles on here. So shout out to these guys. And um, yeah, I think that's a good place to stop for this video. And I could go more into like setting up the node environment or in future videos. I know you guys are really interested in making the bots um, and training the, or sorry, not training, but uh, creating the embeddings and giving the, the documents context on the bots. Uh, so I wanted to start with a basic tutorial on how to create the environment and ba create a basic template that has Langchain working. And then in the next part, I'll expand and we'll build something even cooler, um, you know, working on from the template uh, that we have here today. If you have any questions about, you know, any of this, um, I try to respond to every single comment and I really, you know, I like, I like talking to you guys. And also I just want to say like the past few weeks, if I've been stuttering in this call, it's because I haven't been sleeping because these past few weeks, um, one of my videos went really, it did really well. And so many people have been reaching out to me and it's honestly been like life changing. And, um, I've just been having so much fun, like meeting all of these new people who are interested in AI and keeping up with all of the stuff that's happened in the past week. I mean, like you guys know, like all of the tools that have come in up. So thank you guys for watching and for, um, you know, connecting and it's been awesome building with you guys. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to, reach out to Starmorph. If you need help with doing this stuff, then please reach out to Starmorph because we are working with these frameworks and um, building websites that are utilizing LLMs in websites for clients. And uh, specifically in this bot, I have a lot of features that I'm working on integrating to create products with this and improve uh, different UX and, and different you know functionalities in here. So I'm really excited about the updates that are coming to the bots that I'm working on and um, some of the projects that I'm uh, working on in Starmorph and also the projects that everyone else in the lane chain and um, just in the web dev community right now is just so awesome seeing all this amazing stuff coming out. Um, and what else like there's just so much awesome stuff, research, new projects, new models. So um, yeah, it's been really fun. And again, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.